Hello everyone, Man of Interest here for This Week in Keyboards. We definitely have quite a few topics this week, but that's no worry because I'm here to break it down for you all. We have some GMK, some CAT, and some keyboards as well as some other things here and there. If you're new, this is a weekly show, so make sure you subscribe if you want to keep up with the keyboard news. Yeah, keyboard news is always exciting, always a lot to talk about, always a lot to talk about. Speaking of keeping up, have you kept up with the sponsor of this episode, Kono.Store? Over on Kono.Store, they are running the Group by 4 GMK Strong Spirit right now. It'll be running until Friday, so time is ticking. Join in before you miss out over on Kono.Store. Okay, let's start the news off with our first topic. It's the Group by 4 GMK Boneyard by Tom Berry. What originally started as the Boneyard Alphas in GMK Carbon Round 2, Boneyard has now made its way and ascended into its own full set that will be available on Novel Keys and Oblotsky Industries this June. This set features a nice ivory bone color as well as Carbon's well-known gray. I think this is a great calm set that will look amazing on so many keyboards of so many colors. Keep your eyes on this one. Show us that $110 or $100 base kit, and you know we'll be in it to win it. Our next topic is a group buy. It's GMK Lunar over on the key.co, and it's designed by Moradin. The command module, aka the base kit, is currently priced at $160 and will be running until April 3rd. Currently, the set is sitting at 43 sold out of the 100 MO, 150 MOQ, which means it still has a climb to go. The base kit costing 160 doesn't help with that since it's a bit higher than the standard GMK pricing we've been accustomed to throughout 2019 and now moving into 2020. What is positive for this set is relative numbers for the Novelties kit with 32 purchases, which means essentially almost everyone who is buying this set is also getting the Novelties and hopefully that keeps up all the way till meeting MLQ. This set is a light gray on dark gray with some unique legends and sub legends which definitely drive the price up. Uh, there are some yellow almost caution colored accents and a very off-putting light gray on charcoal numpad. Ground control to Major Tom, your circuit's dead, there's something wrong. Let's just hop back and forth between interest checks and group buys with another interest check. Let's take a look at GMK Orchid by Text Live Utility. Inspired by the Orchid Flower and other vintage botanical illustrations, the set features three Pantones, a almost wine red, a lilac, and a green that, based on my monitor, seems eerily close to GMK camping. While I still will tout I believe designs should refer to RAL color chips when deciding colors, I can't blame Tex for at least having actual Pantones in hand as chips for these color options. At the minimum, these can be sent straight to GMK to show them what he wants color, he or she wants color match to. So, what do I think of this set? Well, it's certainly interesting. I almost think that the red doesn't belong uh, in the, um, and yeah, yeah, I think going with a lilac on cream colorway with that green accent would be like A+. It might feel a bit too close to GMK Violet on cream for others, but that has a much deeper purple. I think the reddish legends just don't belong to the alphas on this one. Hopscotching back to a group buy, let's look at another green set, GMK Botanical, that is over on Dixie Mech. I have to do a real quick quick uh, nitpick on this uh, on Dixie's site. He doesn't have the designer's name anywhere on the main GMK Botanical site. Only at the store page where you buy it, you can see the designer's name, Hazzy, which I think should be added to that main page as well. But let's talk about this set. It features greens, greens, and a greenish white. The first time I saw the set, I honestly eh, brushed it off, but now I've had a bit more time to absorb the set while preparing for this episode. Take a look at a few more pictures and it's definitely reaching out to me a bit more. The Jungle Kit, aka Standard Kit, is running until the end of the month and will cost you a cool $120. If I didn't have all the purchases that I already need to make this month, this would definitely be a contender for my wallet. So if it's in the running for your heart, you should definitely give it a consideration. If you do give it a consideration, I gotta be a self shell and say, please consider using my affiliate link. I really gotta sneeze. Sorry. I am above that. 
because next up, we're back into the land of interest checks, but outside the realm of GMK. Let's talk about Cat Cyberspace by Pappy the Red. This is a very early interest check, so there isn't much to say, but Pappy the Red is definitely strong on his thematic influences. The colors are hopefully goes to that more green direction. If you add more purple, you're gonna get a bit close to Ava Unit 01 territory. Playing around with different greens and a dark black or different grays would really help push that matrix influence angle, which could be an interesting route to explore for a key set. Our next group buy is over on Cannon Keys. It's Cat Atlantis, which was designed by Rensuya, and it'll be running until the 1st of April. And based on the numbers I've seen, it's doing pretty well. In fact, it's doing better than some GMK sets that are concurrently running. That probably speaks to both the possible oversaturation of GMK and undersaturation of cat sets, which I'm sure we'll see starting to get more saturated very soon. Depending on which alphas you get, the cost for filling out a TKL would be about $110. Uh, the main colors outside of the alternate ones do well to inspire ideals of the depths of the ocean where light becomes sparse and the mystery is tantalizing. For so many who may not have looked into cat sets, you may see an interesting aspect here. The MOQ isn't necessarily based on per kit, like with GMK. Instead, the MOQ is more based off of the amount of keycaps, and in this case for Cat Atlantis, 54,000 units. It's certainly interesting, but this approach could help some sets that might not have otherwise been made a reality. Our next interest check is certainly a very, very interesting one. It's the interest check for Palm Jelly Keycaps by Ryu965. I have a set of Palm Jelly Rainbow Keycaps myself, and the fact that they are so rare makes me hesitant to do like anything with them, despite their lack of compatibility. Now I'm seeing this, and wow. The fact that there looks like there could be a future with more palm keycaps is awesome. If I could get some blank white palm keycaps or blank black palm keycaps, one more set of each, I would be set with palm. The colors look interesting and I'm very much looking forward to these. I'm a fan of palm keycaps in general. While it's unfortunate I wasn't selected to be one of the ones to check the early models out, I'm sure the ones who are will all give you some cool info. Our last set to cover is a combo wombo combo breaker because it's not a group buy like the pattern mandated. It's the intercheck for EPBT duck light by JJ48 underscore 24. Why EBT? Well, JJ decided EPBT was, um, it's the way to go. Uh, it's not oversaturated like GMK and CAT and JJ also believes PBT is just the superior plastic. That aside, how does the set look? Described as a dark duck theme, I guess it's it's a dark duck theme. I really hope they use actual rubber duckies to color match that yellow, because that would be the bee's knees. Uh, this set really, it's, it's not for me. If those who are itching for more yellow in their lives should consider this as well, uh, in keeping with the updates, but it's gonna be a pass for me. It's gonna be a pass for Huey. Okay, that's it for the uh, key set news. But let's transition to the keyboard news. First by Danny, we have the Mesa TKL. This is a TKL that proudly boasts its 14 millimeter front height and achieves this by leaving the bottom row underneath the PCB exposed on the outside with no case covering that section. To add angle in the front, the weight extrudes from the case to act as a large wedge, propelling the typing angle to 8.5 degrees. The plate will be mounted via a silicone gasket and the rest of the case itself, aluminum. Extra foam will be provided to help with the sound and it's certainly an interesting board with an interesting idea and a wild execution almost. The board will feature hot swap sockets for aesthetic visibility on the exposed portion of the PCB. I'm not sure that I like that exposed section. And the renders looks pretty cool, but in reality, what if you have a metal desk or like a metal desk mat and you're a firm typer? Will the gasket have enough give to, you know, do its job, but will it at the same time be firm enough to not allow you to short against a possible metal desk. Certainly an interesting board. I'm curious how much that brass bottom is gonna end up comparing to the rest of the board. Exposed PCB, don't know about that, Chief. Don't know about that. Next up is an interest check from Grumpy Bunny 7 for the Alice Undefined 0 slash 00, name still TBD. It's an Alice keyboard, five degree typing angle, top mounted plate we all love and know. 
There will be a brass badge on the back that will be attached magnetically and the case will accommodate both USB-C and mini uh, USB Alice PCBs. Expected price, 250 without a PCB, 300 full kit with PCB. Go fill out that form, give some feedback to Grumpy Bunny. A lot of people are down to clown with the layout and if you want to get into the Alice game, it's never been a better time to try that layout. Next up, on Switch Couture, they are running group buys for their new Electrotype Alice acrylic case, as well as their Electrotype 87TKL. Both are approximately 130, unless you go for the Bifrost Radiant with the TKL, which is the coolest option they have, let's be real. The compatibility for the TKL isn't listed, but I assume it's gonna be the Heine H87A PCB, because why wouldn't it be? Come on. It's too bad no wind, no wind keyless TKLs are available, and if you're itching to try a new layout uh, in an acrylic sandwich, maybe these are worth joining to find out how you might feel about acrylic sandwiches. Are they better with different things? I don't know. Go order and find out. Or don't. I'm okay about it. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This next interest check, it's a great one. Wowie. Faraday 60 by our man Gondolindrum. He's worked on the Shark PCB, Arctic PCB, Doddle 60, and others. Now he comes and he hits us with an amazing project. QMK compatible Topra HHKB Pro replacement PCB. Not only is it just a PCB you can use to program your board, the switch activation for the capacitive switches can be adjusted in the firmware. Every key can be configured and used as an analog level input. That means the Topra switches you love and know can be a fully analog keyboard, which in theory, I think is cooler than the reality, but still extremely, extremely cool. Don't think for a moment I'm downplaying how awesome this project is. There's a ton of positive feedback, and honestly, I beseech all of you to add more positive feedback if you want this in your life, like I do. Gondo, you are magnificent, and I can't wait for this to come to fruition. Speaking of projects coming into fruition, let's take a look at what our friends in Europe are doing. What's this? It's the Decent 65 by Soren and Stormlux. So what's the deal with this keyboard? Well, the general idea is to make a classic top mount 65% keyboard, low height, and bezels on the side of thick with two Cs. The whole board will be designed, engineered, and manufactured in Europe. Great for them. The 65% board will feature a blocker at the arrows, 6060 aluminum case, uh, be available in black, gray, silver, support both ISO and ANSI layouts, yay. Typing angle, seven degrees. USB-C daughter board, you betcha. Estimated price, well, if you're here in the US and you don't have to worry about the fat vat, 255, before on the unfortunately pricey shipping. Those in the EU will have to pay 275 euros, including vat, also before shipping. Taking a look at the prototype pictures, it looks pretty good. Simple, no, no nothing crazy about it. I like the gentle curve on the side. It's a clean look overall. And for that price and what it is, it's definitely on my, if I can afford it and have the opportunity to buy it when it becomes available, it shall be mine list. So. Next is the group buy for both the Canvas and Mahjong by Umio. The Canvas is a low profile version of the Mahjong and both of these boards are a 65% with left hand numpad. Neither board are too expensive with the high profile Mahjong being 250 and the lower profile uh, brother Canvas costing 200 once all is said and done. They're both either flat or a seven degree typing angle if you buy the little screw in um, aluminum feet, so kind of a DIY thing. And speaking of a DIY plate mounted stabilizers, you'll need to get yourself as well as you'll have to solder in the kale hot swap sockets. There are many boards these days that come with kale hot swap sockets as an option, but not many of them actually have you solder them in like these will. That's probably what helped drive the prices a bit down. The ship date is estimated to be July 4th. There are 50 Mahjong units available, 25 canvas units available. The forums will be closed once they're all gone. As of writing this, the forums are still open. Neither of these boards really tickle my fancy, and they're gonna be a hard, solid pass for Huey. I'd rather spend my money on a nicer board or a least expensive future rich board. Next up, we have the Oil 67 by Lead PLB38s. 
Um, yeah, decide to take the arrow keys, escape keys, navigation keys, and just banish them to the Shadow Realm. That's the Oil 67. Uh, the board will have a top mounted plate, 7 degree typing angle, aluminum and brass bits. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of this look. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think it looks particularly good, but I think there's gonna be a lot of people who like how this looks, and it's gonna be for them. The last keyboard interest check to take a look at uh, this week is a Space 65 Cyber Voyager Edition by Air Potter. It's just the new Space 65, except way more cyberpunk than astronautical. So, what are the changes? Of course, there's the aesthetic differences and different badges and bits here and there. Still gonna use that carbon fiber plate, but now we'll include a vibration uh, reduction pad between the plate and PCB and a, uh, another pad underneath the PCB to reduce that spacebar echo that plagued quite a few Space 65s. Price is estimated to increase from the first round and you know what? This is probably the better iteration of the Space 65, at least aesthetically, um, way more than the first round. I still probably won't join it, but uh, it's certainly not the worst design Air Potter's done. Okay, we have two last bits of etc. news. First is the intercheck for the Polycarbonate Alice Wristrest Round 2 from Beam Robot. Yeah, I hear all those words, and yeah, count me in. I can't believe I was dumb enough to not join the first round. Like, come on, Huey. That's just, a, I dropped the ball there, and I'm gonna pick it up in round two. I need this in my life so desperately. The estimated price will be above the round one price, which was roughly 60 ish dollars plus shipping from Singapore. When the group I opens will be a two day purchasing window before the one to two month wait. Last of the news is the unfortunate cancellation of the HHKB meetup in NorCal due to the current world events. I don't want to be demonetized or flagged. So yeah, you all know what's going on. I just want to report this because I hope when the main event is rescheduled, we can have a speaker from Topra come and speak as well as Wada Sensei, the designer of the HHKB, come over to impart their wisdom and answer our burning questions. Questions such as, don't you think it would have been better if Naruto ended with Sakura instead? Well, that's it for this week in keyboards. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. And even though I said it last week, I'm still over the moon that we've passed 5,000 subscribers to this humble little channel. Don't forget to check out the sponsor for this episode. And hey, consider receiving notifications from YouTube when I put new videos up, ding. As well as if you haven't, follow me on Twitch so you can see when my next awesome stream is. Hopefully it's awesome. I may possibly be building the Jane V2CE, so hope to catch you all there. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Okay, new, trying something out with the, uh, trying out the new lens today, so let me know what you guys think about, uh, different lens. So, hopefully it turns out, hopefully it looks okay. I'm not doing this twice.